Hello, this is Dr. David Kreller of the Department of Chemistry at Georgia Southern University. I'm happy to be here with you again today with another chemistry instructional video. This is going to be a two-part video series in which I help you understand some basic ideas that are fundamental within the area of thermochemistry. I'm going to start with a review of important properties of energy that you need to understand, be very comfortable with for all of this thermochemistry stuff to make sense. In particular, I talk about the fact that, you know, there's a total amount of energy in the universe. It's not created or destroyed, but despite the fact that there's just a total amount of energy in the universe and that never changes, energy can change around between different forms. Once we have had our quick little review of energy, we're going to go on to define some terms. And in fact, in this first video, we're only going to get as far as defining what's meant by the internal energy. But in the next video in the series, we're going to define heat, work, state functions, and enthalpy. So let's get underway. To be really good at understanding all of the concepts in the area of thermochemistry, and to be really good at describing the transfers of energy that occur when chemical reactions occur, you need to be very comfortable with the underlying concept of energy. So in this slide, we're going to talk about these two basic properties of energy. The facts that the total amount of energy in the universe is constant, and although the total amount of energy in the universe is constant, energy can change different between forms. Okay, so we're going to use a couple of examples. The first example is that of a cyclist. So here we are, we've got a cyclist who's riding her bike around in a hilly area. Okay, so in her initial state, here she is at the top of the hill. She's not moving, so her initial state is characterized by the facts that she has lots of potential energy based on her relatively high height, you know, so above the ground or above sea level, whatever the reference is. And she does not have any kinetic energy because she's not moving. And so we're going to compare a final state in which she has less potential energy she's rolled down the hill she's rolling she's at a lower height and because she's rolling she's got some kinetic energy so we're going to compare this final state to her initial state okay so in this change you can see a conversion of energy conversion of some of her potential energy into kinetic energy so the total amount of energy that this cyclist possesses is constant however there's been an energy change as she's gone from her initial state to the final state. The example I'm going to use to illustrate these features of energy is a pendulum. And now, so basically in a pendulum you will have an, uh, a bob or an object of some mass, okay, and it's connected to a, a rod or a string, some rigid connection to a fixed point. And so it swings back and forth. As you'll see down here, we can see what's happening to its potential energy and its kinetic energy and its total amount of energy as it goes through this, uh, these cycles in which it's swinging. Okay, so when it's at its relatively high height, it has a lot of potential energy and no kinetic energy, like right here. Lots of potential, no kinetic. And when it's down here at the bottom of its swing, it's basically changed so that it has no, kinet no potential energy, but lots of kinetic energy. But all the while, these interconversions between kinetic and potential energy are, are occurring, the total amount of energy, which you'll see here in this bar, is constant. The height of this bar never changes. Now that we have reviewed a little bit about, about the properties of energy, and the way energy behaves in physical systems, we're ready to sort of move on and talk about how energy behaves within chemical systems. And so we're going to next make a few definitions, define a few words that we're going to use a little bit when we talk about thermochemistry. We're going to define the words system, surroundings, and universe. Well, the system is that part of the universe which, is, uh, which we're studying. And, you know, in a chemical system, that uh, system is going to be whatever atoms or molecules make up the matter that we're looking at. I also make the point that the system may have some relatively complex changes underway within it. 
you know, there may be like a chemical reaction or a phase change or something like that. The surroundings will be that part of the universe which is whatever is around the system, not including the system, but whatever's in contact with it. And based on the contact that the surroundings has with the system, there are exchanges, there can be exchanges of energy. And now the surroundings doesn't do very much, you know, we don't talk about any real changes in the surroundings other than, you know, whatever energy might have gone into it or have come out of it when the system underwent its uh, changes. Universe is basically the sum total of including both the system and its surroundings. So the next concept is that of internal energy. Okay. And so energy can move between the system and surroundings. Well, energy is like a physical quantity, as you know, and there's a total amount of it in the universe. If, say, a system goes from some initial state in which it has a large amount of energy to, and decreases in energy as it gets to its final state, well, because the total amount of energy in the universe is a constant and energy is not created or destroyed, the energy which the system loses has to be has to go somewhere that energy is then lost to surroundings so we have this parameter called the internal energy to talk about the amount of energy that a system has and the internal energy is that parameter of the system that changes when energy is transferred and so energy can both leave the system and enter the surroundings be transferred to the surroundings and energy can also be transferred from the surroundings and be gained by the system, in which case the internal energy would increase. There is a nice little analogy that I would like to use to help students understand this idea of internal energy. I hope you like this analogy as well. In this analogy, just like you've got this idea that there's a system that contains a certain amount of internal energy you can kind of compare this to the idea of the system of a bank account which has a certain amount of money in it so here's your own personal private vault with money in it this represents your bank account just like we've talked about here in which we have these systems that energy can flow out of or flow into a bank account can have money flow out of it and money flow into it. If money flows out of your bank account, well, the balance goes down. If money flows into your bank account, the balance goes up. All right, that brings us to the end of this first video in this two-part video series in which we're talking about fundamental concepts that are important in the area of thermochemistry. We're going to go on now to part two. Hope to see you there. And in part two, we're going to continue our work and we're going to define the concepts of heat, work, and enthalpy.